we're live. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. This is my friend Harley, and Harley has come a long way. <laughs> he used to. It used to be the to the point where I couldn't even. Oh, there you go. I couldn't even stand next to him. He would do that. See. <laughs> and so, um, I think the best thing to do is maybe start off by explaining that not all bites mean the same thing. Um, some dogs, when they when they bite at you, you can tell it's serious, right? Hey, hey, what's up, Daisy? Like the flower? So, a lot of times when you can immediately tell if a dog means you serious harm, and if a dog seriously does want to kill you, put a muzzle on them. I'm not saying don't put use muzzles. I'm just saying that a lot of times when we understand why the dog is acting that way, um, and Harley here is just nervous. He's just a nervous, insecure guy. And I, I understand um, a lot of times when you're really insecure um, and you're nervous, you got a lot of anxiety, and you're trying to hide that, you act tough. You act out aggressively. And I did that when I was in high school. Didn't really work out well for me. <laughs> but, um, and a little bit after high school too, but anyways. Um, so, hey, what's up, Laura? So, if you, if you watch Harley and you see the way he bites, see? It's, it's, it's not a hard bite. He's not, see, it's just, see that? See, he doesn't really break skin. He doesn't even leave a mark. It's just, right? And there you go. You're okay, buddy. It's all right, Harley. All right, there you go. Now we can settle him down. So as long as we understand why they're biting, then we can go from there. What I'm saying is don't use a cookie cutter approach to every situation. Every situation is unique, and every dog is unique. And actually, Harley, um, he, he's going through a lot. He lost a, a cat, Mr. Mr. Tibbles, that um, he, he has known all his life. They grew up together, and that cat recently passed away. About a year ago, maybe a little more than a year ago, his, his, his dad, his owner, Ron, who, it, I didn't know him that well, but, it did, he was such a great guy that it had an effect on me as well. I, I cried the night that I found out that his father died. Um, anyways, so he's, Harley has been going through a lot, you know? So as long as we approach it that way and we try to be understanding with him, then he feels a little more comfortable, you know, a little more comfortable with me, a little more relaxed and trust me a little more because he sees that I'm trying to understand him, right? And so what I'm, what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna go battle with him, you know, and make him feel like he's a bad boy, cause he's not, he's actually a really good boy. Right, Harley? He's just, he's just nervous and scared, you know? And so, what I wanna do is approach it slowly, right? You're okay, buddy, you're all right, see? He doesn't, he doesn't even really, look at that. He doesn't snap hard or bite down hard. He's just like, you know, get off of me. But unfortunately, we have to. <laughs> and see, when I when I start scratching him, it actually feels good. He's, he likes that, right, buddy? <laughs> there you go. And especially, it used to be his back end here that really triggered the attack, the aggression. But now he's fine. There you go. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna approach it very slowly, right? Hey, hey, hey! You're okay. You're all right. You're okay, Harley. There you go. Oh, you're all right, you're all right. See, he just doesn't like being picked up. You're okay. He doesn't really like being told what to do. <laughs> and I can relate, shoot. So, um, let me see if I can find a good place to put this. There we go. So, I'll put it right there. You're okay, buddy. Uh -huh, you're okay. You're all right. No, Harley. <clears throat> now, a lot of times, he for for me, I feel like this is us communicating. He's letting me know, me know exactly how he feels. Dogs are completely honest, <laughs> and so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to communicate back with him and let him know that hey, everything's fine. We have to do this. You know, <laughs> I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to do this. So I'm just gonna first give him my complete trust. And also, I, I, I'm tempted to hug him, 
but that's not good because a lot of times, oh, they'll take that as a as like a challenge, a threat. So whoa, whoa, whoa. you're fine. See right there, the back end here. There you go, buddy. Alrighty. Now, I said this before in the first Harley video I made that a lot of this is is just like waves crashing, waves of insecurity. Um, nervousness, maybe a lot of pent-up frustration even, you know, but it's just crashing and crashing on us, right? So we have to be the rock for their fears to crash on, you know, rather than be like the wind and just keep attacking back and causing this huge perfect storm, you know, that's just going to devastate everything and ruin everything. Rather than, than go the destructive route, just be the rock on the shore that he can count on. He knows you're gonna be there and you're just gonna accept it, right? And then that helps him to feel more accepted and understood. And then he can calm down, see? There you go. <laughs> okay, so. Now most dogs, um, most. I am grooming a Yorkie on Friday. Awesome. Hopefully your Yorkie will be a little bit less challenging than this Yorkie. <laughs> sure, but... Alrighty. Well, you know, hey, the challenges help us grow, right? So, I'm going to be using a stripping knife to help pull out a lot of the dead hair. Because that's where you get the terrier bumps, you know? Because um, his old coat from last season, um, a lot of the undercoat hairs, because their hair doesn't grow like ours. They grow 15 to 20 hairs per follicle, right? So each follicle is producing a bundle of hair. There's only one primary hair or two sometimes, you know, but the rest of them are all this undercoat, this underwear, right? So every season, their underwear cycles through so that they can stay fresh and clean each season, right? So <clears throat> I'm not gonna go through with this just yet, this is more of a finishing tool, right, for me. So, and th that's the way I look at uh, Furminator as well. It's basically a Furminator is this, a stripping knife on a hand different handle. <clears throat> but a Furminator or a stripping knife, I like to look at it as like a, a detail brush if you're painting a wall. It's good to finish with, you know, and edge the, edge the walls and stuff like that. But to make broad strokes, to, to make, you know, you don't wanna start with the detail brush, right? You want to start with like a wider brush right to make the broad strokes cover the walls so that's why I'm gonna start with this undercoat right first pull that undercoat out and I love the way it's shaped so that it doesn't scrape or scratch the dog see that it just grabs the undercoat bundles the dead bundles of hair and pulls it out all right what is that deer slayer nine point hello from west what's up hi how are you how is it in west virginia hopefully the weather's not too bad okay <clears throat> so in my opinion it doesn't really matter where you start as long as you get the entire dog <laughs> but i do like to have like a routine uh, so i don't miss too many spots all right sorry guys this it's pretty humid today in Georgia. Okay. So, this is the undercoat rate, remember, buddy? So I'm gonna name the tool, explain what I'm gonna do with it. I'm gonna go ahead and brush you with it, remember, Harley? There you go. So I'm gonna name the tool, explain what I'm gonna do with it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go do it. Because then, he feels like, you know, it wasn't, it's not something just do, being done to him and he has no say in it, you know? I want him to feel like we're working together, not me just working on him, you know? Work him over like a gangster. <laughs> Anyways, see, look at that. Oh, Harley, much more comfortable now. There you go. All righty. Look at that. It's almost like it's hard to believe it's, it was even the same dog biting at me, right? But the change is that quick, it's that instant. Because he sees that I trust him, he sees that I'm not being aggressive with him, he sees that I'm just accepting him and trying to understand him. I can't even put my head on him. 
you know? <laughs> All righty. But that's the thing. If you want the dog to trust you, you have to first give the dog your trust. Otherwise, the dog has no reason to trust you. <laughs> and it, you can't fool a dog. They can read our body language. They can feel the vibrations coming off of our bodies. So if I didn't trust him, but I tried to act like I did, I wouldn't be able to fool him. He would know. So you see the angles I'm brushing at as well. Hello from St. Louis. Hey, what's up, Heather? So I'm not just brushing any which way, you know, against the crow. I'm, I'm brushing in the direction that I want the hair to lay. So here behind the neck, I'm gonna go this way, you know, towards the tail. But then as I go here, I'm gonna switch directions and go towards the center. See that? That way it creates a nice V, you know? Hey, what's up, Aries, sunshine? So, see that? So I'm gonna go uh, this way to create that a nice strong shoulder, nice you know angle in the chest. Then from here, I'm gonna start going back here again. See that? And then you can lift the leg up. There we go. Good boy, Harley. His skin's looking so much better. Around this time of year, you know, between summer and fall, he would break out. He would just break out. And now his skin is looking pretty good. It's not, it's not like all scabby and nasty like before. And check this out, see that? So we're not getting a whole lot, but we are getting enough to make a difference. And now this area here feels much smoother than this side here. See that? And what you'll notice is that the dog will actually start to look brighter and bolder. They look silkier, their hair literally shines, right? And it, their hair looks shiny, silky, smooth. And, and the colors, the colors look brighter and bolder. And, and the thing is, that bright, beautiful, shiny dog was always in there. You know, we just couldn't see it because the dead fuzzy hairs, the dull hairs were in there as well covering it so i say i don't create a beautiful dog the beautiful dog is already in there i just chisel away the excess like michelangelo all right that is a de shedding tool what is your opinion on the furminator what can you use instead so um heather i was saying in the beginning of this video that uh you know a furminator is basically a hand stripping knife on a different you know handle but <clears throat> yes yeah, it's, it's basically a shedding tool and what i'm going to do is Go through like that, you know? So hold the skin tight. And then what you're doing is you're getting all that dead coat out, see that? So I, I mentioned before that most dogs will benefit from a good de-shedding, you know, hand stripping. Terriers need it, especially like Airedales. So schnauzers, you'll hear about schnauzer bumps, terrier sores. All of these um, skin issues can be avoided just by helping the skin by clearing out last season's dead underwear, old underwear. Now, the reason I do this before I bathe him is because, because this is like old underwear, if I don't remove this before the bath, it would pretty much be like if I walked into the shower with my dirty underwear on, and I just took a shower with my dirty underwear, you know? Like, I guess, you know, you can get away with it, wear a nice suit, wear a nice outfit to cover it up, cologne, but then how long? How long could I get away with that? Wearing the same dirty underwear, showering in it, drying in it, and then covering up with a nice outfit and cologne. Maybe a year, but after that year, I'm gonna have some horrible skin down there, <laughs> you know? And it's gonna smell so bad, that is gonna get to the point where I can't hide it with cologne anymore. So, you know, my coworkers are gonna worry about me. So, <laughs> same thing with the dog. Because it's all happening on a cellular level, and it's happening so slowly, that usually you won't see the effects of just washing your dog in their dirty undercoat. You won't see the long-term effects until later on, when the dog's like four or five years old. 
So, and then what happens? Then it gets to the point where you can't hide it anymore. The dog's skin is horrible, they smell nasty, they're greasy, and then you use even stronger shampoo, wash them even more often, and that just exacerbates, <laughs> that just totally, you know, makes the problem much worse. So, yeah, it's kind of like trying to put out a fire using gasoline, not, you know, thinking it's water. So, here we go. And I'm not trying to come down on anyone or, you know, start an argument or anything. I'm just, I'm just saying these are the, these are real results. All right, what does that say? Vicky. Oh, Erica. What's up, Erica? Vicky Berry. Would you use a decent comb on a Shizu that is kept short? Yes, mine has pretty poor skin too. Yes, and that's exactly why I would use it. Not for the hair, for the skin, to clear out. So even here, well, you'll notice that there's not a lot of skin, mostly, um, you know, skin. Well, not a lot of hair, mostly skin. Look at that. It still pulls and catches because what it's doing is it's clearing out all that stuff that was inside those pores. As you're pulling out like these little fine hairs, along with it comes all the powdery, dandery stuff that's locked inside the skin. I don't know if you can see the little powdery stuff. But yeah, it's always about the skin. It's not, it's not for, I'm, I'm combing the hair, but I'm combing the hair for the skin. Ginny <laughs> uh, Lynn, what do you think of the rubber curry brushes with clearing out the follicles? Yeah, I love rubber curry brushes, especially for like short coats, like labs, things like that. Um, and also if he was like short, like shaved and his hair was much shorter, I might use the rubber curry brush, but nah, I mean, even then, I don't think I would use a rubber curry brush on him, on Harley here. I would use it on my dog, uh, Dexter. He's a pit bull mix with short hair. So dogs with short hair, the rubber curry brush is going to work really well. But, um, you know, dogs like this with long hair. Even if it was cut short, I may just go through with this or a Furminator rather than a rubber curry brush. So don't focus so much on the tools. It's more about each unique situation, each unique dog. What is the best for this dog, you know? Love your patience. Oh, oh, hi from Puerto Rico. Nice. Um, I am taking grooming classes now and I'm so grateful for have found your channel. Wow, thank you. I'm so grateful that you found my channel. <laughs> Laura, love your patience. It is inspiring. I use what you say with my feisty foster at home grooming. Nice. <laughs> but that's what I'm, it, it's, you know, it's trying to understand the dog. Now, obviously, if he was really biting at me and breaking skin or, you know, leaving marks, yeah, I would muzzle him. You know, but I would wait, I would let him bite me first. I know that sounds crazy, but I would let him bite me first. And then I would put the muzzle on him calmly, not angrily. And I would do that so that he would be very clear on why he got the muzzle, right? He earned the muzzle by biting me. <laughs> but because he's not, because he's not biting me hard, you know, I'm not going to just put the muzzle on him because then he no longer has a way to communicate with me. And now he's going to feel even more frustrated, even more misunderstood. So I allow him to communicate with me. All right. And by knowing that he has, he always has that way to communicate with me, he, he, he feels more comfortable. Oh, Llama Lady, hi, made, it, made another live stream, nice. I already gave all the best advice in the beginning, so I mean, it's all downhill from here, Llama. I was kidding. All righty. Okay, see, right here even, great example, mostly skin, but look at that, see how it, see how it, oh, you can't see it, <laughs> Harley, one second, there we go, see how it pulls at the skin, even though there's not a lot of hair there, look at that, and then as that, as that area clears out, you'll notice that it doesn't really pull or drag anymore, there's not that resistance in the skin, right? And then, when you look at your brush, after getting all of this out, hair that you can't even see really. Look at that. Can you believe that all that was hiding there? Where you, can, you, where you can't even see any hair? All of that was in there. So, 
and it actually feels smoother now to the touch. It doesn't feel so uh, grainy. You know, those tiny little bumps everywhere, they're gone. See that? It's smoothing out as you're pulling out those hairs that are clogged in those pores. Uh, hey man, I love your work. I do a little grooming myself and often use your advice. Keep keep on doing your amazing. Thank you so much, little wolf. Awesome. Uh, so I was gonna say like, you know, uh, if, you know, I don't really know. Like, I feel like I'm repeating a lot of the same information I've already shared before. Like, I just, I just kind of wanted to show everybody the whole, you know, how he acted in the beginning. And also, explain one more time the importance of brushing more and bathing less. Uh, and I'm not saying don't bathe. I'm saying just bathe less. Bathe your dog less than you brush them. That's all I'm saying. Uh, brush them more, you know? <laughs> Some people I think they hear, brush and never bathe. <laughs> and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying brush more and bathe less. And that's all I'm saying. All right. Just like a horse, really. If you ask any equestrian, you know, do you, how often do you wash your horse? They'll say, I don't know, you know, maybe once a year or so, you know? They, but they, they brush them every day. Um, unless they're show horses, of course, then they get washed more often. But even then, you know, it's not like they're getting washed every week. Um, and if you ask an equestrian, a horse owner, why? They'll tell you, because I don't want to dry out the dog's skin. I mean, the horse's skin. They get rain rot, they get all these issues hot spots and stuff. And so, you know, they wanna keep the natural oil intact on the skin and hair to protect the horse. Now, I'm not saying that dogs are the same as horses, but if you think about it, their skin and coat works a lot more like a horse's skin and coat than our own. So I think that's where um, a lot of the misunderstanding comes from because it's counterintuitive. Uh, we take a shower when we get dirty, you know? And so I think it's easy to assume that when our dogs get dirty, wash them, right? Just like we would take a shower if we get dirty. But it's not the case. When a dog, and then you can wash them after you brush them if you really want to. But usually you'll notice that after a good brush, even if they were rolling around in mud, they're gonna look and smell clean after a good brushing. Alrighty. Lamely, my dogs get bathed twice a year at the groomer, dirt just falls out of his hair when we brush him almost daily, exactly. <clears throat> so I have to admit my own dogs, well, we me, my little Shizu mix, I washed, I washed him, you know, maybe a couple weeks ago, but he gets washed more off because he's a long haired dog. But my short haired dog, Dexter, and the medium coat, you know, the double coated dog that I have, um, Angel, um, I think, I can't remember the last time I washed them, I, but they get washed maybe once or twice a year. But like, like you said, Lama Lady, they get brushed regularly. He has you sweating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's got me sweating. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what a privilege though, right? What a privilege to sweat and be of service. Josh Aaron, I bathe once a year too. <laughs> I can tell. No, it's kidding. Uh, ours has a double coat. Oh, perfect. Yeah, for a double coated dog, especially like a Pomeranian or something like that, those smaller dogs, if, if, you, if you brush them often, regularly, like every day, usually you can get away with it with never washing them. Schnauzers too. I have a husky and I've got to brush twice a day. <laughs> exactly. Around this time of year, especially Little Wolf. Because again, the changing of the seasons. It has very little to do with the changing of the temperature, the changing of the weather. It has everything to do with the change of the photo periods. And the photo periods are the, the duration and intensity of sunlight that they're getting. So just like the trees, the grass, the flowers, you know, every living thing gets its cue from the sun. So does a dog's skin and coat. So right now, especially huskies, they're gonna be dropping their coat, you know, <laughs> blowing their coat out. Um, and 
yeah, the best thing to do is brush them. Help them out by brushing them, not by watching them before you brush them and further clogging up their pores. <clears throat> this dog here even, you know, the, the vet that they were going to before, um, the, I called them and asked several times what I can do, how we can work together with this skin. They just wanted to use prescriptions. And then I told them about you know, certain shampoos that I'm using that's all natural. They literally laughed at me. <clears throat> well, the girl on the phone, she did. And she made me feel stupid. She like talked down to me and just the tone of her voice. She was like, um, what did she say? Lavender and all these things, they might be good for you. But you know, and I was like, you don't have to talk to me like that, you know? Anyways, obviously, they're not going to that same vet anymore. <laughs> um, and the vet was just prescribing everything other than natural solutions. Now, if you were going to a dentist, and a dentist, you know, you have bad teeth, you know, your teeth hurt and everything, and they suggest all these different solutions, these, you know, mouthwashes, these different expensive prescription toothpaste, injections, shots, surgery even, and the, vet, and the dentist suggests everything other than brushing your teeth. Would you trust that vet? I mean, would you trust that dentist? I wouldn't, you know? They suggest everything under the sun that's expensive, all these expensive treatments, except brushing. They, this is one thing they don't actually believe in. There's something wrong with that vet. So anyways, and the skin kept getting worse and worse. I even used a prescription shampoo that they gave us to use for skin. His skin kept getting worse and worse. And now, look, you know, he doesn't have all those nasty bumps, those grease marks. Anyways. <sighs> yeah, blowing, she's blowing her coat, yeah. Long way. Our groomer says the worst shedding in the, is in the longest and shortest days of the years. And we found that accurate. Yeah, June 21st, December 21st is what they say. Sad to say, you are, sad to say you just sometimes can't change ignorance like that girl who laughed at you. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, hi from Vienna. Wow, hi from Vienna. <laughs> Laura, how can I keep my Maltese from getting smelly if I don't bathe her often? I have been bathing her once a week every other week due to skin issues. It was recommended by my vet, <laughs> exactly. How is that working out for you, washing them every week, right? It gets to the point where it's almost like you have to wash them every week, otherwise they get too stinky, you know? Because every time we wash our dogs, what we're doing is we're, well, especially if you're using strong shampoos and you're not using conditioner, you're stripping away the oils that protect their skin. And that's gonna cause bacteria and fungus to, you know, colonize and infect the, the dog's skin and coat. And then you get a worse problem. And then just before you see the worst of it, you wash them again, because you know the vet tells you to do it every week with their prescription shampoo, with no conditioner, further making the problem even worse. And it's happening so slowly and gradually that then you're willing to try anything. Steroid shots, cortisone shots, you know, all kinds of treatments, surgery even. You know, it's like, why can't they just recommend you brush and floss your teeth like a good <laughs> dentist would, you know? Why can't they just suggest that we brush the dog's coat? Okay. Uh, my vet told me to bathe twice a week. <laughs> and it got so much worse so quick, exactly. And the shampoo they prescribed me cost about exact 30 pounds, or exactly. You know, could, could that vet make it any more obvious what their intentions are? I am brushing more now, perfect. I have a Cocker Spaniel. How often to bathe her? Is it okay to use coconut oil as conditioner? I would use a dog product made with coconut oil, not just coconut oil. Um, but how often do you wash a Cocker Spaniel? Um, I like to use the ratio six to one. So if you're brushing your Cocker Spaniel six days out of the week, then go ahead and you know wash it once a week. But I'm talking full on brushing like this, like a two, three hour session, you know? <laughs> but I'm, you know, if you're doing that, if you're doing a thorough combing six days out of the week, then yeah, wash them once a week. 
But if you're only brushing them once a week, then I would say maybe wash them once every six weeks. Okay. Uh, hi from India. Whoa, what's up? Ella JL. Hey, thank you. Yesterday I adopted a little chihuahua from my shelter and boy, she shed tons of hair. She was a stray. I definitely needed this video. Thank you. I have a Maltese Shizu and he's snippy when he gets his back of his legs done. The groomers categorize my dog as special needs. How do you deal with a dog that is nippy? Um, I let them nip me. <laughs> if a dog is nippy, like Harley here, I just let them nip me. And see, now that he, he knows that, you know, I trust him and I'm okay with him and I accept him, he's fine now. He's not nipping at me. But if you watch the beginning of this video before I got him on this table, you'll see how nippy he was. <clears throat> but that's the thing, it's like, rather than try to get the dog to not nip you, try to understand what's causing the dog to nip, you know? Rather than try to control the dog's behavior and, you know, have the dog behave exactly the way you want the dog to behave, um, try to understand the dog's behavior first and what might be causing the unwanted behavior. Because a lot of times, just by understanding, it, it changes the whole game. What is that quote? Nature cannot be controlled by force, only through understanding. But yeah. <clears throat> okay. Like electricity, you know, electricity, you know, it's a powerful force of nature. Um, a lightning hit uh, one of my neighbor's trees in their, in their backyard and fell over to our house. The sound was just incredible. But yeah, electricity is a powerful force of nature, deadly, destructive. But once we understood how to harness it, you know, how electricity works, once we understood the properties and, the, and how it behaves, then we can turn on a light switch and we have light, you know? So yeah, nature cannot be controlled by force, only controlled through understanding. See, now this side, all I've done is gone through with the undercoat on this side. But see, this side already looks and feels softer and silkier. And this side looks rougher, right? Itchier. And there's bumps. So I'm going to do on this side, same thing I did on this side. And then I'm going to go through with my stripping knife and double check my work and clear all this out. And then you have a dog that used to have seasonal allergies, used to have horrible skin. Now his skin is nice and smooth and he doesn't have to be uncomfortable anymore. Just by taking the time to, to do the work, actually giving your clients real results, you know? Um, do you think my clients like me and pay me because I have this YouTube channel? Probably not, you know, probably actually bothers them <laughs> that I do, you know, so much YouTube and sharing. Um, but it's because I provide real results, you know. Um, just the other day, I did a couple of multi-poos. They're my regulars. But again, um, right about the time where it was time for me to come back and groom them, he was itching and scratching, um, chewing at himself again all night. It keeps the owners up, you know, it makes them worry. They feel helpless. I come in, I spend, you know, however many hours it takes, like I think four hours on that dog, but in a little multi-poo, it took me four hours. But after that, the dog is comfortable, the dog is happy, you know, feeling good, smelling good, and they're not itchy anymore. So that's why my clients pay me, and that's why they love me. It's not because, um, you know, I'm some... YouTuber and I have all this social media follow, social media following and you know, but you know, it's crazy though Is that if you heard some of my clients talk about me you would think I'm a celebrity <laughs> The way they talk about me. I know I'm not I'm just saying um, Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work here because I'm trying to get done in time to try to make it to a shop on my way home so I'm gonna go ahead and end this stream now and get back to work and just go ahead and, but you know, hopefully this was helpful for everybody um Llama lady, I'm so happy I found your channel. I've learned so much. Wow. Uh, chick, 
uh, Chickill416 says, do you use detangling spray when brushing? Is that recommended or is that too much with dog skin? Sorry. No, um, don't say sorry for asking. I love the questions. I do, I use, um, right now I'm using this hot spot relief because it, it is shedding season, you know, and so a lot of the combing and stuff will sometimes cause like the skin to turn a little red, um, you know, stimulated, right? So I use the hot spot spritz right now. But again, I don't, I'm not brand loyal. I, I jump around and try all different kinds as long as they're quality products, right? Um, but for Harley here, because I'm pulling out dead hair and I'm hand stripping, hand stripping is best when um, you do it before the bath and be because the hair is rough and it's easy to pull out. By conditioning the hair, it's gonna start, it's gonna seal it up a little bit, make it easier to slip, and that's not gonna be helpful for hand stripping. See that? So because the hair is dull and dry, it's really easy to pull out right now. So that's why I don't use um, coat sprays or anything on, on him. I'll use it after the bath. Uh, <clears throat> but again, if, if it was a long haired dog, like a Maltese, then yeah, I would spray the coat before I brush him. So again, it's never a cookie cutter approach. You just have to ask yourself for this dog, for this situation, what is the best? Uh, Mally, my dog is banned from Petco. Thank you for the advice. Trying to watch your video secretly at work and go, <laughs> awesome. Um, Vicky, awesome video again, learning loads. Thank you so much, Vicky. Uh, thank you so much. Chick, Chickill416, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. So I'm gonna get back to work. I'm gonna try to finish this as fast as I can. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Uh, Miss Sexy Red. Hey, I remember you, Miss Sexy Red. I'm Mr. Sexy Yellow, remember? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, no, I don't have a shop. I, I, I make house calls. Um, June, thank you so much for sharing your work. Laynell, Laynell says, um, thank you so much for sharing your work. I'm happy I found your grooming. I found a groomer in this industry I can relate to. Thank you. Miss Sexy Red says, hey, <laughs> hey, what's up, girl? No, it's good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that hand gesture was for. Anyways, um, <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, Mayrod, you are wonderful. Hope grooming goes well. Of course. Of course his grooming is going to go well. Who do you think I... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Harley. Harley obviously didn't think that joke was too funny. Right, buddy? Oh, good boy, Harley. Alrighty, so thank you guys so much for joining Harley, Harley and I, and I hope everyone has a great day.